Overseas now, India has begun to count the votes in its general election, which is widely expected to result in a rare third term for its current Prime Minister, Narendra Modi. The process has taken six weeks, as votes were gathered from throughout the world's most populous country. The Associated Press reports that roughly 642 million people voted in the general election, equating to an average turnout percentage of about 66%. If Modi wins, he will become the second prime minister in India's history to serve three terms and the first in 60 years. Joining us now, international correspondent for The Economist, Avantika Chilkoti. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, I know you've been following you following Prime Minister Modi's career for years now. You have a podcast uh, dedicated to it. Uh, we're happy to have you join us this morning. So um, tell us what we know about the results so far. It appears that Modi's party, the BGP, the BGAP, is doing well, but not quite securing the landslide that was expected. Yeah, it's really, really interesting morning today because Going through this campaign, the BJP has really been talking the big talk. This is a party that expected to have an absolute majority in parliament. And throughout the campaign, there have been some questions about that. At some point, there was questions around voter turnout. It's As it's hot in the US right now, it's really hot in India. And at that time, Modi was really amping up this Islamophobic rhetoric. He was really sort of trying to turn out the Hindu nationalist base. Exit polls came out on Saturday. It seemed like it had worked. It seemed like the Modi government was in for a massive victory. And actually this morning, as the results come in, it's not looking good. It's far, far tighter than most people expected. The opposition alliance is doing very well. And it's not just the number of seats. It's actually to do with the geographic spread. If you think about the swing states you guys watch in the US, we have one big state in India, Uttar Pradesh, UP. It's meant to be Modi's heartland and actually is running very, very tight. It's sort of 10,000 votes between some of these um, some of these seats. So, you know, it's gonna be a narrow victory for Modi, for a man who the entire government has been centralized around him, there's a personality cult around mm -hmm. him, it's gonna be a very big change. Yeah, you're certainly right. A personality cult around Modi, he is the state in many ways. So assuming this holds, he does win, but perhaps more narrowly than expected. What lessons, what should we anticipate in the years ahead, both in terms of the continued push towards nationalism at home, but also India's place on the world stage? There's always been two parts of Modi's vision for India, his offering. There's been this economic reform agenda. He says he's a pro-business leader. He's promising growth and to develop India. And on the other hand, there's this Hindu nationalism, this sort of dangerous, strident, divisive politics. And you see him as a leader play these two things up and down. What this vote has said is, well, actually, people aren't happy, in particular with the economics. You've seen some estimates as much as 45% youth unemployment. You've got inflation that the poor are, are really, really complaining about this, this election period. So you're seeing that this economic agenda is slightly unraveling. And as he tries to navigate a coalition, this is not something that he's used to as a politician. How much can he continue his economic reform agenda? And will he choose to amp up and play up that dangerous Hindu nationalism. In terms of foreign policy, to be honest, I don't think much will change for India. This country is in a geopolitical sweet spot. For the US, for much of the West, it's a completely invaluable counterweight to China. And no matter what happens in the government, I think that will, that will remain. Avantika Chilkote providing us expert analysis this morning live from London. She is international correspondent for The Economist. Thank you again. And we'll be looking out for your upcoming podcast series exploring the rise of Modi. It's titled The Modi Raj. Still